Hello everybody, it is a pleasure for me to be with you virtually today for this masterclass. I'm not going to give a big introduction because I'm aware you've already seen my video. For those of you who are not into motorsport, I hope you could understand enough and enjoy looking at least at some racing cars. And for those of you who love motorsport, it's a pleasure to, to be here with you today. I obviously have a lot of reasons why I love the theme of today, get over it. I want to share with you the 10 main things that I've learned, that I did, because I'm conscious that I've got so much to share with you, but I've got to cram it into a short space of time. But the interesting thing was recently I did an assembly for my son's school. It was a tough audience, 10 to 12 year olds. I thought I explained very well my story, being a racing driver, moving into the business side of the sport, and I opened to questions at the end of the assembly. All the hands shot up, and the little boy looked at me and he said, so how many races have you actually won? Tough question. I said to him, I've lost way more races than I've won because sport is brutal. There's only ever one winner and everybody wants to win. That's why what's more important is picking yourself back up, learning to cope with the failures. That is a huge part of being successful on track and off track. The second question, what was the most important character trait or quality that you had that you felt led to you be, being a successful racing driver? I didn't have to think twice to answer that question. The most important character trait for me in my career, tenacity, never giving up, getting over it and keeping going even when things get tough. So I want to start by looking at these 10 key points um, to share with you today. The first one, I think is something which is, is quite overused, this idea of finding your passion. But if I was live with you all right now, I would ask you all, how many of you have a daughter? Because if I look back in my childhood, I was incredibly lucky to have parents who never differentiated between my brother and I. They never made the difference between boy or girl. Whatever he could do, I always felt I could do. So when I started karting, I most definitely wasn't a clear talent for the future, but it very much fitted my character. I loved the competitiveness. I loved the speed, the adrenaline. And I look back and I was incredibly lucky to have found my passion. That thing I loved doing. Because when you find that thing you love doing, the success comes that little bit easier. The disappointments, they're easier to cope with because you're doing something you enjoy. And if you're doing something you enjoy and you're doing it with passion, believe me, the financial success comes. You don't even need to focus on it. It's a byproduct of doing what you love and doing it really, really well. The second part was a big theme throughout my career, this num second point, believe in yourself. If I look back at my younger self, I should have believed in myself even more from a younger age. Because if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect anyone else to believe in you? And I'm a big believer in pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Being in those moments where you do feel uncomfortable, it is a little bit scary because it's in those moments that you grow the most. And obviously, as we all get older, we gain more confidence and it's much easier to put your elbows out, believe in yourself. But looking back at my younger self, I wish I had managed to do that that little bit earlier. The third, the third point, set goals. Short, mid-term, long-term. You need to go know where your journey is heading. Otherwise, excuse the pun, you're just a passenger in the car. You've got to guide where that car is going. You've got to know where you want to go. You've got to visualize where you want to be in the short, mid-term and long-term. I was only ever racing as a hobby but I remember distinctly at the age of 13 being taken to watch a Formula 3 race at Donington Park. For those of you who are interested in motorsport, that's a junior category below Formula 1. It's Formula 3, then Formula 2, then Formula 1. But I was racing in the European Championships, got taken to watch this race at Donington Park. A young driver called Jensen Button won on that day, who of course went on to become a Formula 1 world champion. But that was the day everything changed for me. I suddenly realized 
I can turn my hobby into my career. I could make it to Formula One. On that day, the dream was born, the goal was born. I wanted to make it to Formula One. Obviously, goals can be long term, but short term, I knew what I had to do to qualify for the World Championships, to move in into single seaters. So I think a big part is just knowing what are your goals, short, mid, long term, and they can change. It doesn't need to be set in stone, but I always write them down and I'm always very conscious at the start of every year of going back and checking if I need to realign my goals. Number four, a really important one, especially for me, don't follow the flock. Don't do what everyone else is doing just because you think it's the expectation of what you need to do. I was 18, I had just finished 15th in the World Karting Championships. I knew I wanted to be a racing driver. I had to make it into single seaters. But everyone told me, you need to go to university, you need to study. So what do you study when you have no real idea of what you want to study because you know your goal is something different? I chose international business. I'm sorry if that offends anyone um, in the audience today. But I remember in my second year at university, I was trying to combine my racing with studying. I wasn't doing either well enough. And I went back to start my second year. I remember sitting in a huge economics lecture. There was around 200 of us in the room. And I sat there thinking, what am I doing here? I'm here because everyone tells me I should be here. Everyone has the expectation that I should be going to university. I want to be a racing driver. I got up, I left the, the lecture hall. I like to say I sat on a park bench contemplating my life, but in all honesty, I was building up the courage to call home. I called home, my dad answered, and I said, I want to leave university. I want to focus on being the best racing driver I can be. He said, okay, Toots, that was his nickname for me. Go home, pack your bags, I'll collect you in the morning, and by then, you need to have a plan of what you're going to do. One week later, I had my worldly possessions in a little golf TDI. I drove down to Silverstone, which is the main racing track in the UK, arrived in Northampton, bought the local paper, rented a room in a little old lady's house and started working as an instructor and as a marshal, the person that waves the flags at Silverstone. I could focus all my energy on being the best racing driver. I put all my time and dedication into training, into testing, and obviously having to work to pay the rent at the end of each month. I didn't have a lot to my name. It was a struggle financially, but I'd never been happier because I was fully focused on realizing my dream of becoming a racing driver. Point number five is very much linked to point number four of not following the flock. Point number five, don't always have a plan B. Everyone told me you need to have a plan B because plan A, you want to be a racing driver. Well, that's not really realistic, especially coming from a young 18 year old girl when there was no, let's say, visible role models for me to look up to. But sometimes when you've got a plan B, you've got to get out if plan A doesn't work. I always say, have plan A and make plan A happen. If plan A has to change, if plan A becomes unrealistic, then you can definitely go back to the drawing board and figure out what the new plan A can look like. But don't always have a plan B because it gives you a get out clause of making plan A work. The, the sixth one um, is very much a huge part of, of my journey in the sport. And that was listening to my gut instinct. I think a lot of people, especially in this day and age, when we're bombarded with opportunities, we're bombarded with different roads in, in the journey that we take. And sometimes this idea of doing what you're doing with passion, doing it so well, sometimes it's, it's overwhelming to know what is the right thing to do. I always trust my gut instinct. And bearing in mind your gut instinct doesn't always scream out at you what is the best thing to do. It's not always very obvious but it is there deep inside. And I think when you listen to your gut feeling, it very much leads you on the journey to your own personal happiness and contentment because we're all individuals. What makes each of us happy is different and you need to know 
what makes you happy, set your priorities, understand if you had a free day in front of you, how would you fill that day? Who are the people you would spend it with? What are the things that you would do? But very much trust your gut instinct. Don't feel you have to do something because everybody else is doing something. The only thing I will add, the gut instinct doesn't always lead you on the easiest path. I certainly had huge, huge challenges um, that came up along the road on my quest to make it to Formula One. But looking back, um, those challenges were definitely a very important part of the journey. The next one was um, another, I mean, we're on to point number seven now, but it's, it's a very important point, um, especially for me being a woman in quite a male dominated environment. There was a lot of noise around the fact that I was one of the few women um, in, in this sport. I remember when I finished 15th at the World Championships and when I was 18, 15th was a solid result, but I most certainly wasn't on the podium. So to my great surprise, um, after the final, my name was getting said over the tannoy, Susie Stoddart, my maiden name, come, please come to the podium ceremony. And I remember distinctly that moment because in my team, we all looked at each other, wondering why I was being called to the podium ceremony. I raced along and I was promptly called up on stage to be awarded top female driver in the world. I remember my face going bright red because I suddenly thought, were there any other girls in this competition? That's the beauty of motorsport. You wear a helmet, so you don't actually really see your competitors out on track. But I could recall maybe one other girl I'd seen in the competition. But what was more embarrassing for me was the fact that they had identified me as something different. I wasn't there to be the top female in the world. I was there to be the world champion. But suddenly in that moment, I realized that I was seen as something different. And I can share with you all today that in my whole career, I've only ever done one interview where I wasn't asked about my gender. Only one interview where a main topic wasn't being one of the very few women in this sport. But what I did realize early on, and this is my main point, performance is power. Focus on what you do and do it really, really well. Don't allow the noise around your gender um, to distract you. Because when you become really good at what you do, everything else fades away. I remember walking into the pit garage at Williams for the very first time, and I could feel the skepticism in the garage. All of the mechanics and engineers looking at this young female blonde racing driver and thinking, hmm, but as soon as I got out on track and performed, the doubt and the skepticism were gone. All I had to do was always prove what I was capable of. And grant you, probably there was more doubt initially that I had to overcome. I probably had to work harder to overcome that, let's say, initial skepticism. But when I proved what I was capable of, I never had to worry about being accepted or about trying to get people on board to help me achieve my dreams. So focus on the performance because performance is undoubtedly power. Point number eight, a very, very important uh, lesson for me and one that I, I think mainly learned um, throughout my journey was don't be scared or shy away from the difficult conversations. They need to be had and sometimes getting into uncomfortable conversations um, can be something we try to avoid, particularly financially. You sometimes feel too embarrassed to ask for what you feel you're worth. But I would definitely say, don't shy away from those conversations. Do your homework, come fully prepared and know your worth and stand your ground. You won't always get what you want, but I think being open about what your ambitions are, where you see yourself, what you want to achieve, what you believe you're financially um, worth in terms of your contribution. Those are all things that you need to be aware of and that sometimes you need to fight for. Um, and certainly when I was running the Formula E team, I joined the team when it was racing around at the back in Formula E. Four years later, we nearly won the world championship and I ended up building the most diverse team in top level motorsport. 
we were nearly 30% um, female, um, so very diverse. But I always said, I don't get any world championship points or accolades for building the most diverse team, but by building a diverse team that nearly wins the whole world championship, I'm proving um, that diversity brings performance. But one of the experiences most certainly leading that team was the difference between my male team members compared to my female team members. My male team members were quite okay to come to the table and demand, the, or let's say, have high expectations of what their value was and what they could contribute and what they felt was right for them to earn. And that was most certainly different to the female team members. And I coached them and said, you've got to know when you come into the room what your value is and what you're fighting for. And definitely, definitely don't shy away from having those difficult conversations. The next point, number nine, is, is also one that I think has come with experience because I was someone who was and is very driven and very ambitious. Like I mentioned before, I like to push myself out of my comfort zone because it's there that I feel I grow the most and I can improve the most um, as a person. But sometimes you value yourself against what your achievements are. For me, when I was racing, I would have a terrible Monday, Tuesday if I'd had a terrible result on the Sunday, even if it hadn't been from my own um, mistake. If I didn't perform on track, it was very, very difficult the week after because my mood went up and down with the performance. And I realized that, let's say the older I got, but the more experience I got, that I had to focus more on the journey and not just the destination. Not always just being so focused on where you want to get to that you forget enjoying the journey along the way. And most certainly in sport, it's, it's much easier to have clear goals because obviously it's black and white on a result sheet, where your performance is and how good you are. But I learned that you also need to enjoy the journey along the way, not just focus on the result. And I remember distinctly when I got my first podium finish in Formula Renault, I was standing up on the podium. It was actually Lewis Hamilton next to me. We raced against each other from a very young age and stood on the Formula Renault podium. And you could tell already then how much more he'd won than me because I got on the podium and I couldn't open my champagne bottle. So there's a very funny video of him opening it for me and then handing it back to me. But I remember standing on that podium and thinking, okay, where's the next race? Okay, it's at Thruxton. Is my car good there? Okay, I need to get the setup right because there's one tricky section um, in sector three. I look back and I think to that young girl, why didn't you enjoy the moment? You had been working so hard for that moment to stand on that podium, but you weren't even in the moment and enjoying it. You've got to celebrate the successes in your life. You've got to be in the moment and relish the fact that you've achieved something that you've been working towards. Because then I was already thinking about the next race. Um, so I definitely try much more now to be present be in the moment, enjoy the journey and know that the challenges along the way, the tough days that come, they are all part of the journey. Because if the journey is too easy and you're not having the tough days, then you need to ask yourself, well, am I on the right journey? Am I growing enough with the journey that I've chosen? My last point, and it's one of the most important um, points for me, because bearing in mind, I come from a small town in the west coast of Scotland and through sport, I managed to see the world, travel, meet amazing people, and make it to the world of Formula One. And that was a dream that a little girl had, that little 13-year-old girl who dreamed of making it to Formula One. It's so important to have dreams. And of course, it's about dreaming big, but knowing and visualizing where you want to get to and what that big dream is, is a huge, hugely important part of, of achieving and getting the goals in the middle along the way to the big dream. But someone once said to me, and it's something which I, I really always think back to, dream and dream big, but also remember that a dream without a plan of how you're going to achieve that dream, that's called a wish. And wishes and dreams are two very different things. So dream, dream big, but always have a plan of how you're going to achieve that dream. 
that's all I think I have time for today. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you all. I know there is going to be a Q&A at some point, so I very much look forward to all of your questions. Um, but it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. And going back to the theme of getting over it, such an important part of my career, picking myself back up, having the tenacity to just keep going, and that mantra of don't give up, because the tough days, they make you stronger, they make you more resilient, and my goodness, when you get to where you want to go, it feels so much better. Thank you so much.